Hey, what's up you guys? Happy Vlogmas Day 16. So I have been working from home for most, for the most part of the morning. So now I am here at work. Um, I just need to print something quickly and then get it signed by a client and then come back, scan it in. And then I think I should be sorted for the most part of the day. So yeah that is why i'm here but stick around until later on in the video where we can discuss how much trainee accountants are making these days as you guys have requested so this is that video um but stick around for that a little bit later I don't know what I want. I think I want a whopper. I'm extremely hungry, so I want a full meal. The whopper is king, by the way. Oh, I kind of want. I'll just get a whopper. It's okay. So, because there's a drought in the port of Ely my workplace gives us free water so i'm just here to have my bottles of water and yeah so i am back from work and let's talk about it let's get straight into how much trainee CASAs are making these days. Trainee accountant, trainee auditor, trainee whatever, training, you know, when you're doing your psycho articles, this is how much that you can expect to be making. So again, if you haven't watched the previous video, we are talked about how much chartered accountants are making. I'm going to preface this again and say that this is to help those who are maybe in high school and are thinking about, you know, pursuing the chartered accountant journey. This is going to help you sort of gauge when you are in training exactly how much you will be making. Because one thing that I can tell you for sure is that for me, it was the shock of my life because I feel like in high school when, you know, psyche and, you know, firms and people came to sort of tell us about chartered accountancy, I feel like they told us that, okay, chartered accountants will make a lot of money. And then all of a sudden, when I was in training, I was like, when is the money coming? <laughs> when is the money coming? Training, training salary was a bit of an adjustment, a bit of a shock. Okay. It wasn't bad. Okay. It wasn't bad, but it was a little bit of a shock because you were like, where is this money that we were promised all those years ago? So I'm just sharing this so that you have sort of like 
an idea of how much you will make while you're doing your training. This is especially beneficial for those who have who are thinking about doing their articles next year as those offer letters are coming in. This is going to be so beneficial to you just to gauge the salary bracket that you're going to be in. And it's also going to help people like me who like to plan to plan your budget accordingly for the following year. So yeah, it's it's nice for those as well who haven't received their offer letters and who just want to be able to budget and plan. Um, this is also going to help you be able to plan your life accordingly, okay? And also for those who are just nosy and who just want to know. There will be a few of those. So this is what I'm going to cover in this section of the video, okay? So first, I'm going to talk about how much trainees make when they don't have a CTA, so this is something that's near and dear to my heart because when I started my training, I also didn't have a CTA. All I had was the degree that I got, my undergraduate degree to my name, and that's about it, okay? And that is a reality for a lot of people who are going to pursue being a CASA, you know? Um, not everyone goes into training with ITC or with CTA. So I'm just going to cover those bases as well because this is information that I wish I would have had access to when, um, when I was a trainee. I'm going to cover my people, the ones who are going to be starting their training for what if... I don't understand. Ah, so I don't Syria Papa. So I'm going to cover those people who are going to be doing their training next year um, without having a CTA or a PGDA. Um, so don't worry, you'll be covered. And then I'm also going to speak about how much you're going to make in first year, second year, third year. I'm also going to talk about how much um, trainees who only have CTA will make because this is also something that is a reality that you might in your first year, you might not get your ITC. Okay. You have a few chances to be able to get it. And you know, it's sort of like a journey and people get it at different stages of their training. So yeah, um, there might be people who have CTA, but who maybe won't pass their ITC in the next year or they have CTA, they're in second year, they want to know going into, they're, they're in first year already, they want to know going into second year um, what's a reasonable salary to be earning or stipend as they like to remind trainees. Um, so I'm going to cover that as well. And then finally, I'm going to cover how much um, a trainee makes that has ITC only. And then I'm going to cover then a trainee that has the full package, which means ITC, APC, and all of that. Above. So I'm going to try be as short as possible. Um, but yeah, let's, let's get into it. Okay, so my beautiful lovelies who don't have CTA, and are going to be starting their training. Um, so as a first day trainee without a CTA, um, who has maybe a degree to their name, you can expect to be getting between nine and 12,000 Rand. Again, like in the last video, I'd like to reiterate the fact that there are people on both sides of this bracket okay there are people who might earn less than nine thousand rand which i feel like is a little bit criminal uh, it's a little bit mm. but there are also people who will earn more than the twelve thousand rand so basically when i came into training in my first year um I had a few offers, okay? I had an offer from a small international firm and they offered me 9,000 Rand. I had an offer from a gov government department. They were offering me salary grade level five, which is around about 150, 152,000 Rand, which would have amounted to about 12,000 Rand. That's pretty like standard for a trainee with no CTA, no experience at all. Um, and I think the reason for this is because a lot of firms 
um, they try to pay for your studies. Um, so both of the firms, both of the offers that I just spoke about, I didn't take them, um, but both of them were offering that they would pay for my CTA, right? And the one that I ultimately took also paid for my CTA and everything. But how that worked is that they offered me 70% bursary and then I had to, throughout the year, pay the 30%. Um, which at UNISA is about 5,000 Rand. And then the 30% is about 5,000 Rand. And then at the end of the year, when I passed my CTA, I got reimbursed that 30%, which means all in all, I kind of got 100%, if that makes sense. So I think the reason why the salary is so low is because, yeah, it's expected that you're going to need to go through school. So a lot of places will pay for your school. And they're also going to make provision for the fact that while you are going to school, you might not be fully present at work. So you won't be as productive because, you know, you've got tests that you need to attend to. You've got studying that you need to attend to. So you won't be having a lot of hours on the job, although a lot of people have the same amount of hours even more than those who are actually not studying but again yeah, that's a story for another day but i feel like it was to sort of cater for that and also like it's only fair that when you have more qualifications you get paid more so obviously if you don't have your cta people who do have their ctas will be paid more than you it's just how the world works um it's just how it works you know so yeah it sort of gives you something to aim towards and something to work towards it's little but eh, it's life guys so second to third years who don't have cta can expect to just have a cost of living increase okay and this is dependent business to business six percent four percent five percent sometimes you know it's dependent on how much the cost of living increase is for that specific business so from whatever your first year salary is what you need to do is to add on your cost of living um, cost of living adjustment and that is going to be your second year salary that's how it works in most of the businesses but i am aware that there are some businesses who have a different salary bracket for first years to second year to third years like it will be a literal like promotion going from first year to second year and going from second year to third year. So this would probably depend on your competencies. If you've met all your first year competencies, then you will qualify for like a second year, um, a second year adjustment. So this adjustment can be anything from like about 1.5 to about 3000 Rand jump in salary from your first year to your second year salary. But guys with tax and all the deductions, like that adjustment just disappears somehow and also lifestyle inflation kicks in and it just disappears you guys so yeah it's safe to say that on the conservative side you will have 1.5 increase on the more like relaxed sort of like higher side you will get maybe like a 3000 rand adjustment and that's with you just solely going from first year to second year right so if there's no criteria for you to move from first year to second year or to be classified as a first year or a second year or a third year then chances are that you're only going to get your cost of living adjustment which is about like 4 to 5 to 6 percent just depending on how each business works at some sometimes it's based on performance sometimes it's just based on inflation sometimes it's based on a lot of things but however the business you'll be working at works it out that's your cost of living adjustment now if you are a trainee with the cta i'm going to give you sort of three thresholds um a lower a middle and a higher ground okay and this is without itc on the lower end you can expect to get paid round about 155 
there in that range 150 155 which amounts to about 12,000 rand and then in the middle ground you should expect to get around about 164 to 168,000 rand this is round about the 14,000 rand mark okay and on the on the higher end anything over and above that there are businesses in the top space that are giving even as high as 25 grand to the trainees so it really just depends on a whole variety of factors um but honestly on the higher end if you're earning more than about 14,000 rand when you don't have an itc and you are a first step uh ow, ow, ow. and you're first year then you're probably on the higher end of things. And then let's talk about trainees who have both their CTA and their ITC. Because what happens is that you will start your training contract probably having just written the ITC and waiting for the, for the results to come out. Or you maybe um, failed the previous ITC and you're waiting to write the second sitting of the ITC. So what normally happens is that as soon as you pass your ITC, your salary has another jump because you have now gotten another qualification. It's not really a qualification, but you, you've gotten another level, you know, you've gotten and you've unlocked another level of the CASA journey. So you get rewarded handsomely for that. All right. So a trainee who has both CTA and ITC can expect to earn around about 3,000 Rand, maybe 3.5 more than the salary of a trainee who has CTA. So for example, on the lower end of things, a trainee with CTA, no ITC is earning around about 12K. So once you get your, C your, your ITC, then you should expect to earn around about 15K. Okay, gross. These are gross numbers, okay? Because I'm not going to speak about net numbers because a lot goes into net, guys. A lot goes into net. Tax, different contributions to your pension, sometimes your medical aid, like a lot, a lot, a lot. So let's just work on gross numbers. So middle ground, we said most without ITC, it's 14K. So with ITC, just add 3,000. So you should be earning around about 17K, 17.5 right and then on the higher end of things again you should be looking at round about i don't know like 20s in your 20s right that's on the higher end of things remember it's on the high, higher end of things 22 and above it just depends how much uh, how generous <laughs> your employer is right so rule of thumb there's no scientific like formula to this like it's not scientific proven but in my experience and in my observation normally that adjustment for itc is normally around about three thousand rand on your gross which then the tax yaikinya and then it's around about 1.8 probably in your net 1.8 1. 1. point something 2000 adjustment to your net salary which it's quite it's quite comfy it's quite good <laughs> but then lifestyle inflation kicks in and also you'll get people on the top side of things earning as much as 40,000 South African rands in their first year of training so guys it's not everybody that's gonna earn 40k ne, please but they are especially at the certain these certain banks these banks and these wealth management places <sighs> but obviously there's a rigorous recruitment process at those places and it's extremely difficult to get into and it's extremely difficult work once you are inside so it makes sense that you'd be compensated that much okay but it's not everyone that's going to earn 40k guys like as a trainee if you are in, in the teens, just try get as close to 20k as you can. <laughs> I think, you know, as a first year, if you're anywhere near 18, 19, 20k, then I feel like relax, you know, relax. You're living 
life you know just don't let lifestyle inf inflation creep in that's how you're gonna keep yourself in check you know keep your keep yourself very minimal when it comes to your expenses yeah well as a trainee so now let's talk about the babes who have managed to get their apc so this is probably going to be around this the end of your second year of articles going into third year sometimes it's during your third year as well with the end of your third year um sometimes i don't think there are first years who have apc but you never know anything can happen but it's normally apc you write it once you've bagged 20 months of your training contract so that's round about in the cracks in the middle of your second year so a lot of second years third years and above will be sort of the group that is writing um the apc right which for those who don't know it's your final qualifying exam all right board two as it was previously known so on the lower end of things when you have apc in 2022 2023 you should be looking at round about 220,000 rand to about 246,000 rand per annum per year okay so this is round about 20 to 22,000 rand right in the middle ground it's a little bit better. It's around about 300,000 Rand to about 386,000 Rand. So this is basically like anything from like 22 to 22, 23,000 Rand round about like 32,000 Rand gross. That's how much like a lot of third years who have APC are earning um so it's 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 quite comfortable there it's quite comfortable and again on the higher end of things you do get those ridiculous top salaries that are just you know as high as your imagination can take you so i feel like anything over and above thirty-two thousand rand is pretty golden like you have won the jackpot you have won the lottery at this point like anything above that as a trainee you're living life okay you are living your best life so if you click here you'll find that i've covered all the details about how much a chartered accountant makes once they've qualified so go ahead and check that out happy day of reconciliation let's reconcile tomorrow for another vlogmas video thank you so much for watching guys bye